It's currently 7.30 in the morning and we are here at Lake Elvin. I don't take my car out very often to get photos, so I thought it'd be nice this morning to try to catch a sunrise, snap a couple pictures of my car for you guys and kind of walk you through how I do it, how I'm catching the sunrise. The sunrise so far has turned out pretty beautiful. I think we're gonna get some pretty cool photos today. I'm rocking the Sony a7 III and I have the 16 to 35 millimeter Zeiss lens on here right now. I'm also gonna do a couple photos with the 85 millimeter Zeiss as well. And I always put on an ND filter and I stack a polarizer on top of it to get a little more color saturation and a little more depth in the video and photos. So as you can see here, the car looks so much better when you turn on the headlights and the fog lights. Any lights that it has on it, just flick those on. And this first shot I'm gonna get is the front right panel of the car. It's really important when you do the front right panel of the car that you actually have the wheel facing you like, like this. So this is gonna turn out to be a pretty cool shot. I always put it at an f-stop of four. So I put the aperture of four, which keeps the entire car in focus. I'm also gonna back up a ways for this shot too so I can get a wide angle kind of atmospheric shot of the entire car. And I'll probably play with a couple different angles on this shot too. One more thing, so when I was first starting out with car photography, I was wondering what a polarizer really did to a photo. Watch what happens when I turn the polarizer on the two side windows. So right there, it's not blocking out any of the reflections, but right here, like this, it cuts out the reflections. As I'm straightening out the car for this next shot here, I actually noticed that I have a little bit of foreground here to work with with this photo. So I'm gonna snap a couple pictures with a couple of these plants here in the foreground. I also like to get the head on shot of the car just like this. And then I also like to get a little closer and get kind of the front head on cut off in half right at the Subaru symbol and the hood scoop. So I'm gonna snap a couple of those pictures too. Another cool shot to get if you have a nice background is a side profile shot of your car. So right here, I just lined up my car along the edge of the little drop off here with a lake behind it. Again, I'm gonna get a couple shots probably from about this angle. And another thing I like to do with the side profile, I like to get up close and personal to the wheel here. And I snap a wheel shot too. Another tip with that, if you remember, try to straighten out the logo on the actual wheel itself. So try to straighten that out. If you can straighten the logo out on location, it's gonna be a little easier for you. You won't have to edit it. I also like to grab any other detail shots that I notice on the side profile. So I have this little sticker here that I'll probably get a close up shot of. Uh, anything else, there's any nice lines in the car, you can get shots of the nice lines in the car. Badges on the car like this, get a couple close up shots of that as well. I'm doing the back left panel on this shot. Again, when you do like a panel, like the back corner of a car or the front corner of a car, you wanna have that wheel so it's facing you. I'm also liking this angle for the direct back of the car as well. So again, I'll probably take some dead on back shots like this and then also probably get up close so I can capture the detail of the headlight and any other decals on the car, any other details you notice, like I have a sticker here too, I'll probably get a good picture of that. Ooh, so that wraps up the first location I'm doing. It is a little past 8.30, so golden hour is passing us. There are a couple other spots I'm gonna try to go to and get a couple photos and I might throw on the 85 millimeter lens as well to try it out. But otherwise, it basically covered most of the angles that you'd usually shoot in car photography at this spot here. These are the shots that I got at the first location. It is hot, I'm like sweating. This next little spot here, you gotta go a little bit faster because I'm in the middle of the road. But I'm gonna slap the 85 millimeter on right here because it should really squeeze in the background and the sides to the image. I might have to stand a little further back than usual, but this should make for a pretty cool shot right here. This right here is also a really nice looking shot. It's really pulling in the trees in the background, it makes the car look beefier, and it makes it look like it's just being engulfed by the trees. 
I want to show you guys this shot too. So I actually lined the car up along the side of the road up against the evergreen trees. And I have a little bit of foreground here that you can kind of see. I'm using the 85 millimeter. But watch what happens when I lower the aperture on the lens. So it makes it way brighter. Then I can adjust my ND filter and I can adjust the polarizer to make sure I cut out the glare where I want it. And I can snap a picture right here as well. Something else I want to say about the ND filter, you don't need the ND filter necessarily for good photos. So in video, it's important to keep your shutter speed at double what your frame rate is. Now something with photos, instead of using the ND filter to darken up the image like this here, you can actually just use your shutter speed and just make your shutter faster or slower according to how much light you want. Just remember the higher you go, the more you're going to expose the highlights. And the lower you go, the more you're going to expose for your shadows. But if you are doing video, I do recommend getting an ND filter because then you can do this and still keep the cinematic motion blur that the normal eye is used to seeing. That's just another little thing to keep in mind when you're shooting photos. Well guys, that is the second location and it's getting really hot and humid out here. In South Dakota, it's already pretty humid this time of year, but I'm also right next to a lake, so I'm like drenched. I'm like dripping in sweat. Otherwise, yeah, this location was pretty sweet. We had evergreen trees surrounding the car. We had a nice, just straight road that was backlit by the sun. I think overall the, the photos are gonna turn out pretty good of this spot here. I also threw on the 85 millimeter Zeiss lens, which does a lot of compression in the image but also it gives more of a beefy look to your car. So I threw that lens on for these shots too, so the photos are gonna look a little different than the first location that we were in. Now I'm gonna hop over to the third location and just grab a couple more shots for you guys. Okay, so this last shot, I'm actually elevated up on these stairs here. There's a little platform I was able to walk up on a nice little hill with grass on it. Sometimes it's cool and nice to get overhead shots from higher up on your car. Kind of shows off if there's anything on the hood or anything on the roof of the car. It makes it look pretty nice. So I'm gonna snap a couple different angles up here. I might play again with the foreground, that type thing. But this is gonna be one of the final shots I get, guys. And again, I'm just using the 16 to 35 millimeter lens again. All right, guys, so that is the end of this video. It was a hot one today. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. I hope you got a little something out of it. I don't do photos all the time in my car, but I thought I would change it up a little bit and try to get a couple photos here and there. If you made it this far, I appreciate those of you that do actually make it to the end of my videos. So leave a comment down below on what your favorite year of WRX is. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one.